Hey, I know I'm recording again. I'm hoping you can hear me okay with my mask on. Because I want to put my mask on. And that sound that you're kind of hearing in the background is, I threw a little fan in the window down here to create a, a reverse draft so the dust doesn't go anywhere else. So what I want to do now, you saw how I taped and coated this, and I just want to dust this down, but uh, I confess, guys, uh, this, this was pretty heavy mud. It didn't dry very well. So yesterday, I couldn't skim this yesterday because it was still too wet. But what I did do is I came up here and I fixed any of the bad spots that were there. So anything that was really off, I filled it in. If you remember how I pulled this up here like this, I had left an edge there. I kind of scraped it down and filled that in. I had a couple of holidays here and I filled those in, but, and then so I went up here and I just touched it up. I did not put much on here, not even a, just a little bit in my pan, actually. I, it wasn't even a quarter of a pan full that I put on up here, just to straighten this out a little bit to make the skim coat go a little easier. So now I'm gonna skim this out. So, so bear with me, I'm just, I gotta dust it off first and uh, before I can skim this. And I wanna hit this edge with this pole. And I'm not really sanding so much as I am just kind of knocking off boogers and uh, and getting it so I don't have a lot of garbage pick up anything in my mud. You know, I, I don't want to leave scratches or anything in my mud. So, so I'm done with that pole. I'm going to switch to this one, my radius pole. And I'm looking to just hit any high spots again. Uh, if you remember when I coated this, I had some, I had some laps, you know, just some, some big ridges. And I said, don't worry about those. You can scrape those off later. I kind of took my six and knocked them down, but you didn't have to do that. You could just come back and scrape those off. And then I touched it up, like I said, and now I'm just hitting some, some high spots and some edges, that's all I'm really doing. Uh, taking those down, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grind it because this mud is pretty much where I want it. It, it feels really good and it is right where I want it. See my back brace that I have on. And then I noticed watching a lot of us old guys on YouTube and on Facebook and Instagram, uh, we all, all seem to have, have to wear these nowadays. And uh, I don't normally wear it, honestly, but when I got here and carried all of the scaffolding from my garage, and set up, my back was just, my back was just tweaking. Um, I can get this off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut the fan off in a second too. But my back was just tweaking a little bit. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's, let's do something with that. So I, I threw my back brace on. I know, I, I think I had it on the last time I was doing this too because it was tweaking then too. So now I want to, uh, again, I'm gonna use the biggest, one of the biggest knives I've got. But the first thing I wanna do, I wanna skim this. I'm gonna skim this angle. So I don't even want that knife. I want my six. So I'm gonna grab my six and I'm gonna coat this side of the angle again. So one more time, I wanna coat this side of the angle. Oh, missed that one. And, uh, and I'll, t I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, uh, it's because 
This needs a second coat. I can see I've got some, this was some heavy mud here, and it really does need a second coat. And uh, so I want to make sure I get that on here. Oh, ignore that. <laughs> I'm going to go down there a minute, check my fan, shut the fan off, and uh, see who's just calling me. Actually, I'm going to shut my phone off too. All right. Now, because of the nature of this angle and what it is, and I taped it, I'm going to float this down a little bit more than it is. So I'm going to add a little bit more mud, right? Flare that in. Okay. And this, my friend, is skimmed, ready to sand when it dries but the angle is still not ready to do that. So, all right. So now that I got that all flared in, I am actually going to pull this tight. I want this pulled very tight. I am pulling this as tight as I can and as straight as I can. And believe it or not, this angle is very straight. It really is. I've got a little bit of a holiday right there, if you can see it. Got to add more mud there. But. Voila. Now, if this was level line, this would have been so easy to do, guys. I would definitely recommend you use level line, uh, but you know, you don't have to. If this was level line, I would only, I wouldn't be doing anything in the center of this. I would only be flaring the edges. That's all I would be doing. So now I'm gonna have to let this dry. I really like the looks of this angle right now, but it needs to dry completely before I do this side. All right, so, so you gotta bear with me. I won't, be, uh, I won't be coating this side of the angle today. I will be doing it, well, I probably will be doing it today, but not until later this afternoon after, after it dries up some. So again, I'm gonna pull this out. Make sure that's nice and straight and that it looks good. And it does. It really looks good. And then uh, as soon as this is dry, I will do this side. I will do this side. So that's my main point, guys. Walk away, let it dry. Don't try to do both sides. If you're doing an angle, do the one side, let it dry, do the other side, okay? Uh, I know a lot of people who just want everything done yesterday. Most drywall finishing is not a drive-through restaurant type of deal. You've got to take it in layers, and those layers need to dry completely before you can do the next layer, all right? Uh, things have changed a lot since they started coming out with set, setting compounds, lightweight setting compounds. I need to pull this a little bit closer. So that's why I'm, I'm, a, I'm pretty bad at this. I, I don't lock the wheels very often on my Baker carts, which is not a smart thing to do. Um, don't do what I do, do what I say, right? Isn't that what our parents used to say? Hey, 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 don't do what I do, do what I say. Thank God for drop cloths, huh? That's why they call them drop cloths, because we drop things on the cloth. All right, I like that, that looks good. 
This mud is a lot heavier than my last mud and it should have been the other way around. This should have been my first coat mud and the thinner mud should have been my second coat mud. So I did things a little bit backwards here. But that's okay. We can do it. We've got the technology. All right, I'm gonna flare this edge so I get some of this mud back. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna wipe this out real quick, shut the fan off. Check my phone and get right back to you. Oh man, that looks really good. So, so hang on. All right, so I'll be right back. I'll be back, and I'm back. All right, so let me finish this. I actually moved my scaffolding a little bit closer to my patches here, so I'm not reaching quite so far and uh, flying off the edge of my scaffolding. And uh, All right. I'm not used to these big long knives. Honestly, I, I don't use a 12, 12 inch knife very often. I'm doing it for this just because I'm recording this, telling homeowners, telling people who aren't good at patching that yes, you wanna use the largest knife you've got for something like this because you really do want to pull this out as far as you can. Now, I, I've, got a, I've got a two foot knife, a 24 foot knife, and I've seen a lot of professional drywallers, what they would do is they would mud this up and then they would put a, pull a two foot knife across this. And I probably would do that here also if, if this was down low on the low part, if I had a, let's say I had a big window right here that was shining across this wall, I would probably want to do that too there. But, uh, but up here, all my light is going down. Um, and believe it or not, uh, this, whoops. Huh, you know, it's, it's crazy because my mud, my mud and the mud on this, on the, and this, I'm sorry, my paint and this mud are really close to the same color. I should have dusted this down a little bit more right here. I've got some ripples going across here. Don't play with it as much as I am, guys. You don't need to, you don't need to. You can always come back and, and do another coat if you have to. Uh, I just want to have this all painted tomorrow. My granddaughter's coming over tomorrow and I want to make sure I have all of this painted and I have all of my uh, stuff out of here before she gets here. Because I could see her, she's gonna think, oh, monkey bars, let's play on the monkey bars. So, and I don't want that. That's just asking for trouble. And then if you don't do it, she starts yelling and screaming like all of the people that you see on YouTube <laughs> and Instagram. But those are adults acting like two-year-olds. This is actually a two-year-old acting like a two-year-old. I remember saying that one time the kids were all yelling and screaming and having a great time and, and the parents came out there and, hey, you kids, stop that. Stop acting like children. That's a joke, you know. I need a little bit more mud. A little bit more. Hey, how many guys use a stomper? Many of you guys still use stompers? 
I don't know. I, I honestly have been so out of it with my own company, not really seeing any other tapers tape, not really out there involved with uh, employees anymore because I'm retired. Uh, so, but I don't know if they still use them or not. They're very, very handy. They really are great for production. Um, you know, you don't have to sit there and take dip after dip after dip out with your six inch knife. You can grab your stomper and just pull out what you need in one stomp, one or one or two stomps very, very quickly. All right, now that I have that in there, I wanna flare this edge a little bit more. And the reason I can do that is because I skimmed this so tight. Let's go down. And down. And I went down, down, down. And the flames went higher. Okay. This is one spot that I probably should have used that two foot trowel because it needed it. Right here, I keep getting this ridge here that I don't want. This knife needs to be just a little bit wider. Just a little bit wider. But you know what, I'm, this is what I'm gonna do right now. Listen, if you can see that line, I'm gonna leave it alone. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, as soon as this dries up enough, I'm gonna skim that line right there. That's all I'm gonna do. That side came out really nice. This side here. All right, there you have it. I have a little bit right here, little spot right there I wanna to touch up. Now, what I could do, actually, is I could do, take my, I'm gonna take a big knife here and I'm gonna pull out a couple of bad spots up here. But I still have to skim this, right? I still need a final coat here on this side of this tape. So, but I do, I do see a little hump here and, uh, and I'm sure it's from, I'm sure it's from meeting everything up here. This, this piece of drywall came up into this angle and it left a little hump there. But what's really neat now, guys, is because I skimmed this side really tight, I can pull it tight and I don't leave anything on there. This, this will look really good now. But I do seem to have a hump right here. Is it that, is it that a big deal? Only if you can get your eye up here and look at it this way, is that a big deal. You are never gonna see it from down here because this line is straight and I'll show it to you at the end of this video. All right, you guys have a great day. Hey. If you really like my videos, subscribe. And if you really, really like them, please just share them with somebody else. How do you like my new t-shirts? And you know, you also might want to check out these other videos that are playing right down here right now. So uh, just click on them, all right? Subscribe. Have a great day.